Welcome back to the channel. We've known that our theme is going to look like this, so we need to take the next steps to start adding this little banner where we can always add our discounts and so on. We've already added our logo and now we need to work on the navigation. Next we'll work on the header here and next we shall work on these parts where we can pick out a highlighted feed and just talk about how much time it will take to deliver and then we can just put our shopping cart on the side here. But to structure all this out we need to use Bootstrap as we had agreed. So right now I'm going to get Bootstrap and drop it inside our theme. So let's go to the Bootstrap website. So when you get to the Bootstrap website you have a couple of things you have to do. For example you have to add the CSS, you have to add the JavaScript, so what I would rather do is just have the bundled version and just get everything out of the way. So I'll copy this here and I'm going to come and add all that code that we need to add Bootstrap inside our theme folder, so I'll just paste it down here and then we're going to need our CSS from here, so I'll copy that as well and then I'll paste it inside our editor and then we're going to start stripping this and enqueuing the way JavaScript and the way CSS should be added inside our WordPress. So there's a way to do that, so we'll need a hook and this is an add action hook and inside this we're going to need the hook which is wp underscore enqueue scripts and then we shall add our callback function which we shall of course give our prefix which is our techie press and then I'll just add this here to make it easy for me to come up with names so, and then we'll start writing our function right here. So of course this is a named function so I have to add the name of the function there and then add our brackets. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to know that this function is going to add scripts and style. So we need to have the wp underscore nq script. Now this is going to take in our JavaScript and it's going to take in a handle which is going to be more like an ID, so I'll add this ID and say this is going to be bootstrap and then we shall call this a jQuery, so we shall have the bootstrap jQuery which is this piece that we have here, we have jQuery running in WordPress by default but I might want to load this version so that it works well with my bootstrap, so I'm going to have bootstrap jQuery and then I'm going to add its source which is the link, so I'll get this HTTPS and get this minified version and then I now need to add the dependencies that this file needs and this file doesn't need any so I'll just leave this as an array because that's expected inside this particular hook, there's an expectation of the dependency. Then I'm going to add a version here so I'll add a version of let's say 1.10 and then the next thing that I'll do is I need to tell WordPress that our code will be sent in the footer. The reason we do this is because JavaScript is best loaded after the whole DOM has been loaded. When I talk about the DOM I'm talking about we want our logos, we want all our content to have loaded, I'll show you this by inspecting this page, when you look at all this code we want to have our head load, our body load, then right before we close off the body allow JavaScript to come in and this is because JavaScript is more behavioral, it does not bring in our content, it does not bring in our style, it just adds behavior to what is already existing which is the content layer, so let's go and fix that, so we'll add that to the footer, so I'm going to change this and send it in as true. Now once we've done this we need to add a semicolon so that this doesn't break and I'll duplicate this because we are also going to add our bundled bootstrap, so I'll copy this here and then add it here. So instead of having bootstrap jQuery which is already an ID of this, we need this to be very unique, so I'll call this the bootstrap bundle and now this bootstrap bundle is going to have this link it will have the dependency on this jQuery bootstrap, so I need to add that right there and then of course it will be version 1, 
and then I'll also call it to true so that it will be sent in the footer. And I'll save that and then we can take away what has been added. The next thing that we are going to do is actually wp enq and we're going to enq the style. Enq style will also expect a handle, so we'll call this a bootstrap CSS. I'll copy this, add this here, and then just call this CSS. We'll add our source, which needs to be this link of bootstrap. So check this, change it. Next thing we're going to do is add a dependency, and we don't have any dependency whatsoever. And then we'll add a version, which is the same as 1.0.0 just like our bootstrap up here, and then next we need to add the media this should apply to, and I'm going to choose all because we want it to be on the mobile, we want it to be on the screens, we want to be on tablet, and all other features. Bootstrap already gives us that leeway to do all of that. Now next I am just going to take this out, save this because it's all clean, and next I'm going to do is come back here to inspect my page, I'm going to go to the console to make sure I don't have any issues, I'll reload this page, and on reload we'll see that our bootstrap is actually showing up, however our JavaScript, if I turn this off just to see the JavaScript, you'll see that it's not there, and the reason it's not there is because we've sent our JavaScript in the footer, but the footer is not loading. So in order to have our footer running, we shall open up our footer.php file, open it with our PHP tags, then next we're going to run the wp underscore footer function, terminate it, and then we can always escape this and then close off our body, and then the next thing we shall close off the HTML. Of course I need to put this slash here to show that we are closing off the body, I'll tab it to make it more readable and save this, and then on our front page we're going to add the final piece to the puzzle which is get footer, because that's the way we shall expose our bootstrap inside the footer on our page. When we come back here and reload, you will see that we are actually getting a lot more JavaScript coming in, and if we scroll through here, you'll see that before we didn't have the WooCommerce and all these other files that are loaded in the footer, we're getting the new JavaScript from code.jquery.com, and we have our bundle of JavaScript showing up here, so we have both the JavaScript.js and we have the Bootstrap bundle also showing up here. Now that we have both of those and the Bootstrap CSS working, we can then go on to style our page. So I'll just have a quick look at what we are supposed to do, and then I'll start adding some information. So we'll go back to our bootstrap here, and then we'll see what we are supposed to do next. So with this you can know what your bootstrap is going to look like. So I'll use this div of container fluid, I'll come back here in my code, close off these other pages that I don't need uh, to edit right now, and I'll choose to add this here, I'm going to escape the PHP, open it up again so that we don't have anything breaking, so I'll come to bootstrap and see what I actually need right here, so since I just need this exactly, I'm going to copy it, I am able to add my HTML, so I'll put this, add a class of container, I'll make this dash fluid so that it's always running, we'll have our row, and then I'm going to have two divs in here, so these divs will always be equidistant, they will be equal in terms of size, so I'll need this to be call dash nine, and then I'm just going to call this call, so that we have nine pieces of this, and then we shall just have this take out the rest of the space should it be needed. Now in here we're going to have a paragraph, and this paragraph will have my lorem ipsum, so I'll add ten pieces of of data in there, and then once we are here I'm going to add this with a button, this button will have the stay connected, and then I'm going to add a class here of button, I'll have a class of button there with button large, I'll add orange background inside my code, and we're now going to add this style in the background, we need it, so I'll add it, 
So on reload, we're going to see that we actually have this here and our button, which does nothing, our image is up here, we'll need to change that in the near future, but I now need to add our style of orange background. So I'm going to create a new folder in my themes folder, which is called assets, I'll add CSS and JavaScript, then in here I'm going to add a new file which I'll call style.css. Now inside here is where I'm going to add our orange background, and I'll give this a background color of orange, and I'll save this. Now it will not show up until I enqueue that style to our front end, so I'll duplicate what we did with the bootstrap here, I'll call it techie, press food, CSS, and then of course we are going to need the location of this file, so what I'm going to do is use the get style directory URI, which is a function in WordPress to get us to the directory where this style.css is seated, or the root folder of our theme, and then inside there we're going to add the word assets, add CSS, then add style.css, and I'll leave everything the same as is, and I'll save this, come back here, reload, and you'll see that we have our orange background in there with our image, now I need to take this up and bring our logo down, and you'll see that our structure sort of changes, now this is going to be on a number of pages, it's going to be above the header, so what we need to do is just get this whole template that is here, cut it, come back to our header, and then just put it just below the body, we have it there, I'll tap this in to make it more readable, and then of course do the same for the button and the paragraph, and then save this. So if I reload it, you'll see that we have our banner that screams right up here, and then we'll have our logo down here. So I need to make them a bit more boxy inside uh, Bootstrap itself, so let me change this up, this markup a little bit to make it work for me, and make everything go inset, so I'll duplicate this to make it two, of course close off the div, I'll duplicate this and bring it down to match the space on both sides, then I'll tell this to take up the space of about six, and this will take up the space of two, so I'll save this, come back here, reload, and we'll see that we have our space that is in the middle, I just need to make sure that our content is actually floating in the center, so I'll add a new paragraph style for here, and I'll call this banner add paragraph, and then in that button I'm going to change it to light, so that takes up the light mode version, and I also call it button stay dash connect, so I'm going to need both of these classes, and then I'll add them to my style sheet that's custom, so I'll copy this, save this here, come back here, then I'll add the individual pieces of style, so I'll get that paragraph, I'll get the button itself to show up, and then I'll start styling. Since they are empty, that's why you're seeing my editor screaming at me, but I'm going to take away the border radius for this, so I'll just say border zero in this case, then for our paragraph I'm going to just say the margin should be the same both top and bottom, so I'll say one rem for both of them, and then of course the left and right is going to be zero, so let me save that, and you'll see that this is balancing in the middle, however our button is not, so so let me do the same for our button to make it float in the middle, up and down, and then of course we'll turn off the border, and I'm going to make this important, because it seems like Bootstrap is taking over this, so I'll reload it, the button is okay, I'll just add some little padding to make it cleaner, so border dash radius, I'll change the border radius to zero, and then I'll change our color of our text, I'll change it to black, and then save this, come back here, reload, you're going to see that we have our corners are now much straighter, this is okay, as connected, 
I can change it to uppercase here, and then maybe give it a little bit of padding to make it look nicer. So I'll add a padding of about 10 pixels by 20 pixels. So I just want to have a padding left and right. So I'll have a padding left, and then I'll have a padding right, 2020, just to add on something. And then we are going to change this to always be text transform uppercase, so that whatever way we bring in our data, it will always be uppercase. I'll reload this, and voila, we have what we needed here, just like in our image. So we are next going to go to change our logo and then add our navigation in the next video. So thank you for watching and enjoy your day.